So all of this is important. And and it starts when you walk in the room. It doesn't start when you sit down and the interview starts. It starts when you walk in the room, when you uh, greet the panel. Because a lot of times when you're interviewing now, it's not one person. It's an actual panel. Because what we found out is more than one person might have different um, views of the interview. And you can converse with each other at the end of the interview to make sure that, that candidate is correct for that position. Good day and welcome to the Get Established Show. Today's topic is workplace attire and interview skills. We got a special guest in the room today who's going to help us out to tell this story and uh, give you some valuable information. Along with my brothers in arms that we, uh, your favorite internet uncles. We want to ask you guys to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it to the, to the community. With that being said, I'm going to pass it over to my brother, D. Jones. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Get Established Show when we talk about issues that may affect our community. And hopefully we give you information that helps you make better decisions moving forward. Today, I want to introduce my panel, my brother from the same mother, Chris Jones. Grand Risings. I have Raymond Shine. You know what it is. The man on the board, Garrett Big Williams. In the house. And today we have a special guest in the house, Mr. Sean Porter. Good morning, good morning. Great. Now I'm gonna pass it to my man, Garrett Big Williams. Thank you, brother. All right, so let's get it kicked off. Today we got a special guest, Sean Porter in the room. Uh, he's going to help us out today. Sean's got a background uh, as a finance manager. So he's seen uh, several people come in and, and be interviewed in many different ways. Uh, he also is one that adds some spice. He professionally adds spice to his wardrobe um, working in the workplace. So first off, I'm going to welcome Sean. Sean, good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks. You looking sharp as Thank usual. You. Uh, this was all for the panel, for the crew. <laughs> you see the fellas, we just we kept our regular right. situation I going. It. I love it. Yeah. We kept our, our regular situation going because, you know, you know, we can get fancy too, but we didn't want to try to compete with you, brother, at all. So, yes, since tell us, so tell us what's going on. Tell, give, give us your fragrance of the day because you're also known to be uh, uh, very selective with your fragrances. And, of course, None of us can smell because smell of vision is not real yet. Okay, got you, got you. So um, I was feeling myself this morning, so I even had to smell good. If y'all could smell all of that right there. No, I was just joking. Um, I put on a little Aventus today, a little Creed Aventus in the gray bottle. Okay. Not the black. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Okay. All right. So this is where we're going to open discussion up, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be about of course, uh, workplace attire, but also about interview skills. Derek, you, which in, in your role as a uh, you know manager in, in your facility, um, what are some things that you've seen in an interview setting that were not appropriate? Well, you know, with me, it's not so much uh, the dress code because I'm in a medical field. Often enough, people come to interviews and scrubs. Um, you do find some that come um, suited and booted. But uh, it's posture. When you walk in the room, posture, eye contact while you're um, doing the interview. A lot of times when people can't make eye contact and they don't have the correct posture when they're interviewing, um, I become a little leery of what they're talking about. I mean, you want to be able to understand a person, too, making sure that they're clear, um, not stuttering, um, making sure that their enunciation of, of certain words. You, when people start saying, oh, man you know, stuttering. And, and I know a uh, interview can be a situation where you're nervous, but you have to pull that together when you're interviewing because you want to sound confident. You want to sound like you know what you're talking about. You want to impress the people by the, the, the conversation. So all of this is important. And, and it starts when you walk in the room. It doesn't start when you sit down and the interview starts. It starts when you walk in the room, when you're uh, greet the panel because a lot of times when you're interviewing now it's not one person it's an actual panel because what we found out is 
more than one person might have different um, views of the interview and you can converse with each other at the end of the interview to make sure that, that candidate is correct for that position. Thank you, brother. That's awesome. So Shine, good morning, brother. Uh, let me let me ask you, um, where was the time where you had an interview where you felt most prepared and why? Um, <clears throat> when, uh, when I interviewed for uh, this uh, graphic design uh, position, I mean, you know, because I, of course, they uh, give you, well, in school, they give you the uh, necessary, uh, you know, you know, uh, things that you have to have to have when you go to, to um, your interview. You know, when, <clears throat> of course, the dress is one thing, because, of course, you it's about presentation, but also it's about what you have in 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 that's included which is your portfolio um you know and and, and your resume so you know in order to that for them to know you know what experience you have you know what um and what your your abilities are and can you explain the you know the things that you've done as far as what's uh what you have presented in your portfolio you know so those i mean just just when when I when I went on that those interviews, it was um, I mean, it was just, you know, just what was your what was your uh, skill level and what was your, um, you know, just ask me about my desired pay and, and um, you know, how 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 would I, um, you know, add add to this company? So, you know, I mean, it was just basic stuff, uh, but just the presentation was always uh, things that they were looking at as well. So you so you felt extra confident because you know you know you got that that thing with your art where you ain't you know you know your stuff is top notch right so you walked in there with your chest poked out. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not gonna say I, I necessarily did walk in there, walk in uh, any any business with my chest out, but I I walked in with uh, uh, the goal to say, hey, I'm going to let them see what what i what i can do and what i can bring to that company you know and let let that stand as uh my um you know as as my uh you know as as my my um foundation as far as who who i am and what i can bring and what i could bring to them now the confidence is uh <clears throat> in uh as as you go and you see and you feeling you feeling the uh you know how how well the interview is going then you like okay yeah I feel like I'm creating a great impression on this person, you know, but yeah. I mean, that's everybody has their, uh, you know, their way of going about it. Definitely. Definitely. One thing I know, one thing for me uh, in the interview process, what I would do, and this was of course, after you've had a few interviews and you had a few jobs, I would always research the company. So in an interview, it's also good, not only to answer questions, it's also good to ask them. And when you ask them, it's best to ask things specifically about the company because then they knew you inter that you actually did, did some research and it may make you stand out. So that's just a tip from Uncle Big. When you go into an interview, do some research. The in the, look, everything's on the internet now. It's so, it's so much easier than when we came through because you know we're, we're older, we're Generation X. And when we came through, you could get information but it just wasn't as readily available as going to your cell phone or going on the internet and popping up and reading about when the company was founded, this and that, blah, 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 and their story. So that's just another tip. Um, but Raymond, that was, that was good, uh, good, good stuff, man. So Sean, coming from the, from the other side, let me ask you this. You got two candidates, okay? And I know you're your finance manager. Sean's finance manager at a, at a dealership. Um, you got two to come in and they're coming in for a sales position, okay? Now you got one, they both, let's say that their attire is pretty much the same, but you got one that's completely clean cut, okay? And we could say all things equal other than the appearance. You got one clean cut and you got one that's got green hair and maybe a few tats that's showing. Are those gonna be deciding lines that's gonna separate those two in the outcome? Um, absolutely. So, 
So in sales, not only are you representing yourself, but you're representing the brand and then you're representing the company. So that person with green hair and tats everywhere actually might be able to do the job better than the other person that, that was clean cut. But because so much of sales is about your presentation. So I, I would look at the person with the green hair um, as having a slight disadvantage in that interview situation. I'm gonna, peg you, I'm gonna piggyback off of what Derek said. Um, it starts when you walk in the room. So, mm -hmm. so I have a motto basically is your presentation that gets you in the room. It's up to what you say out of your mouth that determine whether or not you can stay in the room. Mm -hmm. So, um, sales is, sales is a big part of sales is your presentation and how you connect with people. So even though that person that's slightly out of, um, character for the position, as far as the appearance, his personality could have been golden, mm -hmm. but how he presented himself, you got a thing when you're walking up to a, a client or a, a potential client, or you walk in in a business, you know, you're representing so much more than yourself. And oftentimes you might not get a chance to display um, your skill level if your presentation ain't right. Right, right. So that's, critical and key. So a, a lesson in, in, in this particular part of the conversation is we understand that tattoos are very, very, very popular and you know, all of that. But if you're going to work corporately, if you're not going to, you know, be an artist and do something independently on your own, or you're going to work corporately, if you're going to get a tattoo, put, have it somewhere where you can cover it Absolutely. in a professional environment. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't get your tattoos and don't color your hair and all that stuff. What I'm saying is, this is a tip to if you want, if you're going to stay in the corporate world, you want to fit the corporate image. Right. Because when you come into a job and people say, oh, you know, it's the way I feel, this is my, this is blah, blah, blah. But you got to remember, you're coming to fill a position. This is a place that's being held for the right person, the right candidate. So when you come in, you need to be what they're looking for in all aspects. You got to beat out the competition as well. So, right. fellas, I gave one tip that is normally my secret sauce is my research with the company, and I bring it up and ask questions. We can just go around. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, I'll start with Derek. What is a, a tip when you're interviewing something you do that may be different from what your competition probably is doing? Well, you know, in the past. And when I walk into interviews, uh, I always start to tr start with a light note. I actually uh, become a little humorous just to break the tension in the room. Everybody is kind of uptight to me in an interview. Right. They want to know what I'm about. I want to know what they're about. I want to know what the company is about. So I often start with a little humor just to break the tension. And it usually works, man. It, may, it relaxes everybody. And now we can have a conversation. Because what I want to do is I want to control the narrative in an interview. Even though it's their company, I just want to feel like I'm in control of the interview. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Raymond. Well, when I um, enter into the um, in, into that interview, always the first thing I do is, is shake the hand of the interviewer, you know, because that lets them know that, I, you know, I know the proper uh, protocols and how to greet someone and being able to give them a firm handshake is to let them know that hey you know i respect you so you know and i respect the um you know this uh the, the um you know the, the opportunity that you're giving me to be able to interview for this position sweet chilla <laughs> it always but bo, bo, i do what both of them say basically i'm a humorous anyway so i, I yeah. come in there cracking a the joke because that makes me comfortable and see how they, they you know they relax as well as i look them dead in their eyes I always keep eye contact with them the whole time. Um, as well as, like you say, you greet them. But I always look like I'm very serious the whole time about what we're doing. Uh, I'm very serious about the job I'm trying to get. You know, I ain't, I ain't uh, texting. I ain't looking over here because, you know, I'm like, I'm I'm dead looking it in their face. So a lot of times, and they, they see that I'm, when I'm serious and I'm sincere about it, they, you know, they ask me certain questions. And I think some of the hardest questions you got to prepare yourself, even for the young people who are getting out of school, is like, what can you, like Raymond said, I remember the first time they hit me back with that. What can you uh, bring to this company? 
oh, hey, you know, I just got here, you know, fresh out of school. Thinking, <laughs> what can I? <laughs> they hit you with some all B questions, so you gotta have your mind shot to answer these questions. I feel like I'd be a great asset to the company. I can help build the company, and you know, so you know, I remember the first right. time we hit that. I had a, I had a pause for a minute, but these were my younger days. But they hit you with these same questions. That's good word, Chris. Sean. Um, I would say be personable. Just, just let your personality shine. Just like Derek said, you know, his personality is, you know, he wants it to break the ice. Um, I think once you start talking, you know, obviously you're there, so you probably have a little bit of confidence about the position itself. But just genuinely let your personality shine. Let them know what kind of person that they're going to be bringing on board. Um, on board. And with that being said. Um, Big, you said something about doing some homework on the company. Mm -hmm. What I find is what a lot of people don't do, um, depending on the position, obviously, do homework on the competition for that company as well. So mm -hmm. when they That's ask good. you questions, like Chris said, you know, what are you going to bring? You know, you know, what kind of assets, you know, are you going to bring? You know, you're not just kind of shooting off the cuff. You know, you know what's going to. Uh, make you stand apart from the people that's down the street or, you know, on the other company that's probably, you know, just if you forget about those things that really connect with that particular business that sets you, you know, apart or that sets the company that you're interviewing from uh, apart. So definitely, man, you, you just got to be well-rounded, not only for that particular company, but the competition for that particular company or that particular field, because, from a sales background, you have to set yourself apart because there's so many um, other options out there that people can go to to spend their money. Um, so you definitely got to know what's going on outside of your uh, store or your business or your company that can set you apart from the people down the street. Yeah. Appreciate that, Sean. Yeah. So basically, we hit, we just putting y'all on game today. You know, um, one key thing that I think if you really want to have a successful interview is you need to practice. Yeah. You get one shot. It's yeah, just like absolutely. we talked about Pat in a in a in a in a, in a past show how you have, we have uh child athletes that will work. I mean, they start in diapers as swimmers and weightlifters and gymnasts and basketball players and track stars. Um they're starting and they're doing all of that preparation and all that time to go to uh, an event every four years if they make the team. So in in this world of, uh, you know, you're looking at world employment, you have to be prepared. And when you go to interview, we share some, we, we're sharing tips with you. But when you go to an interview, they're asking pretty much all the same questions. So for you to go in there and, and, and not be prepared is irresponsible and it's going to show up. It, it, will, it could be what will set you apart in the wrong way from somebody else that is prepared. So I would say get you a, a friend, a family member, a partner, and have them to, to mock interview you. We've, we're giving you some tips right here that are going to be beneficial, but you know what they're going to always ask? They're always going to ask a strength. What's one of your greatest strengths? What's one of your greatest weaknesses? And to have an answer that's prepared even though it's prepared, it shows that you put time into preparing yourself for the interview and you were really serious about it. So that's another tip on game. I want to add one other thing. Go ahead, uh, what you were saying about the athletes are so true. So you, if you think about that in the employment world, often at times or not, um, our young people go out and apply for these jobs, whether it's at uh, in the restaurant industry or in the clothing industry. Um, you want to be, you want to start to practice now. Um, mm -hmm. just don't walk in with jeans and a, a polo shirt. Go ahead and dress the part and act the part. Um, you start at a young age, it becomes habit moving forward. I just wanted to add that. So moving on, we're going to lighten it up a little bit. You know, we gave you some skills and we're going to continue to give you some skills throughout the conversation. But now we want to talk about a little more about once you're in the job, um, how to maintain your professional attire when you're in a job because there's a way to totally mess up your wardrobe and not look professional and then there's also a way to add your personality into it where it's not so blah and so bland and um that's why we got mr sean l porter 
in the room today <laughs> because uh, he does uh, this thing called Bow Tie Tuesday, where that's him adding personality to his professional wardrobe, but it's not overly flashy. It's professional and it's just spice to style. So Sean, talk to us a little bit about that. <laughs> okay, so bow tie tattoos, man. It's it's just something. Um, I forget where I even got the. Um, I guess it was like a hashtag or something. Um, I forgot where I heard it from, but it was just something I just started to do. Um, if I could take you back, so um, I came from a finance background in the car business. Then I shifted over to an agent at New York Life. Um, and I wasn't wearing a bow tie at that time. I, I felt like I dressed well. Um, by that time, I dressed on what I would say at an executive level. Um, but I just didn't incorporate a bow tie in my, in my wardrobe. I can't remember what, what gave me that um, interest, um, but, but I did. And I remember um, being dressed well walking into the Dominion Tower building in downtown, and I would get in the elevator, um, and the same people, white, black, or whatever the case may be, if they spoke, or, or, or you know, if they did, they would barely speak. Um, and once I started, once I learned how to tie a bow tie, I had to practice a little bit first. And then once I learned, the same people that would barely speak or that wouldn't speak, when I walked in that building, they spoke, they had conversation, they complimented me. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I mean, I was the same dude. I dressed well, but it was something about wearing a bow tie, and this may be a shift, to white America views it a little differently than black America. You had to break that down. Yeah, so, so I could wear a bow tie all day long. I could pass 100 black people maybe two people might recognize and say something complimentary, right? I don't know what the perception is with a bow tie to black people. I can assume, I can imagine, right? Um, but I think with white people, they look at it like you're hell higher because I get so many out of those hundred people, probably 70% of white people would always compliment me, even right now. Like if I wear a bow tie on Tuesday and wear a regular suit and tie on Wednesday, I'll have more compliments from white people on Tuesday than, than, um, than on Wednesday. I, I don't know what it is, but they just look at you differently hmm. if you have on a bow tie. I don't know what it is. Um, so I just kind of incorporated that into a part of my wardrobe and and, um, you know, but when you look good, man, dress good, smell good, you feel good. All of that shows out. So, yeah, that was it. Okay. So how now, other than the bow tie, give us some some ways to actually like some examples of what is acceptable in a professional environment. Of extra <laughs> extra things you can add or a different spice you can add, but it still, you know, maintains professionalism. Okay, so there again, we're gonna go back, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are shopping for for men and, and ladies who are helping their young men, right? Mm -hmm. But men as well. When you're shopping for your business uh, attire, you can't <laughs> you can't wear your Easter suit to work. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> you cannot wear your Easter suit to work. You can't wear the purple suit. You can't wear the lime green and the yellow and the, all this. You can't do that. That that's that's for Easter Sunday. And I'm not sure whatever other e um, events you know it's from. But you know when you're thinking of business uh, uh, attire, when you go to shop for a suit. You, you want that suit to be acceptable for every occasion, okay? You want it for work, um, court, <laughs> funeral, wedding, church. Like you want that suit to be able to fit every occasion. It's not a matter of what the occasion is. It's a matter of what color or what style suit you want to grab that day. That's what you should, in my opinion, that's what you should focus on when you're selecting your wardrobe for business. 
because you could leave work and go to a function or you could leave a function and go straight to work. That's how your business attire should be. That's how your attire should be, in my opinion. That's how your attire should be. I don't have business uh, business clothes. I, I have clothes. Um, I have suits. And any given suit, I could wear, pick any suit for any uh, any um, place or any uh, any event. So just be mindful of when you're picking your wardrobe. The first question that you should probably ask yourself is, can I wear this no matter where I go? And if you can't say yes, then don't buy the suit. That's good. That's good. And this is for um, one thing we've always heard as we come up. You don't dress for the position you have. You dress for the position that you want to be in. That's true, too. But um, so, I mean, you know, we all had pretty, pretty good backgrounds and role models. But if we don't know, we just don't know. And, and that's no fault of anybody. And what I mean by that is um, even coming into sales, I, I think I looked nice in, in my clothes, you know, shirt, tie, suit. But when I reached a management level, I had this dude, man, that really hit me to how you pr how you should present yourself on the next level um, because your presentation is so, so important. And it's more than it's more than just spending a lot of money on your clothes and your suits. You know, there's some, you know, like crazy, like there's some stuff, man, that you can go in the K and G and buy, you know, like a nice tie mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily look like it costs twelve dollars, right? Um, so it's not the the amount of money that you spend on your clothes. It's really how you present yourself. And as a finance manager, I think I became a finance manager when I was about 35, maybe. So having the ability to sit with somebody that's 21 buying their first car or sitting with a 70 year old woman or man who's probably had more money than I made at that time. Like I had to present myself in a way that no matter what the deal is on the table, I'm worth, I'm worth and qualified whatever is on the table that is being handled. So you have to present yourself in that way. Um, you know, you want to, you know, you want your clients to have confidence um, in your ability to handle their transaction, their deal, their money. Um, so you just got to, you know, you have to, what's what I'm trying to say? You have to be able to, to present yourself in a way that you're qualified to handle it. And it is a different, it is a different level of attire. Um, like for instance, when I was in um, New York life, and if I'm going to talk to you to try to protect your family or to have you move money from one place to another, are you going to pay more attention if I, with the cliche, if I look like a million bucks or I look like I just started yesterday? Like, how much confidence are you going to have in me with your life if I don't look like that I'm qualified to handle what's being discussed on the table? So you got to present yourself in that way. Outstanding. If Appreciate that makes sense. Yeah. So another, another tip, because um, we're talking about this is the conversation we have. This is more of an upper level attire um, corporate environment. But even if you're working in an environment, let's say if you're working in a restaurant business or if you're working in uh, a retail, it's key. Or, or, to or the, the, the medical field. Or the medical, or the medical field. field. I, I got a bunch <laughs> of stories, brother. Trust we're gonna bring We're going to bring you in a sec there. Um, one thing that's critical is to all, especially when you're in the, the restaurant field. And I mean, this is in it. You want to show up in clean clothes. Right. People don't want to eat food when somebody walking around in dirty clothes. You know? So, you know, present yourself well. It's the difference between because you're representing the company. If the company makes money, typically you have an opportunity to get more money. Not always, but sometimes you do. So it's all about everything is a part of a chain. It all comes together, it all works together. 
So, you know, you always demonstrate what you want to put out. So try to be, you know, neat, clean, presentable, and, and, and you know, ready to perform. Derek? Yeah, I wanted to um, go back to the question of Big saying, how can you add a little spice uh, to your clo- clothing in um, a professional, you know, setting? Um, I work in the medical field, so most of the time I'm dealing with nurses, uh, technicians, um, people that wear scrubs most of the time. And, uh, you know, I want to have a conversation with the women for a second. Um, there's a difference in form fitting attire <laughs> and tight attire. As a woman, you don't want to wear something tight to work because that's not professional. Um, understanding that I don't want you walking around with clothes that's bagging about to fall off of you, form fitting is fine. If you want to add a little spice to your outfit, uh, you can always add different colors. Um, for me, as a male, uh, I'm a sock dude. So if I want to add a little spice, of course, I'll put on some socks that are a little different, uh, but they're nice and they're, they're not too outlandish. And I get a lot of compliments on my socks. You'll be surprised. I'll be sitting down doing something. Oh, I like your socks. But it, that's how I add spice to my attire. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be something a little subtle. It could be colors for the women. You could wear different colors to work in my in my field. But we want to stay away from the tight clothing, ladies. Form fitting is fine, but not tight. I just want to add that. One of the jobs I work at, and a lot of times we pick up kids, and we go to these schools, and now these ain't ghetto schools. And some of the young ladies who uh, work, with us and 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 my, and my boss had a, you know because we we supposed to dress a certain way at least be casual or because we presenting the job or you know we representing the job. Some of these girls we used to go pick up <laughs> kids. They would have these uh, what you call these bedroom shoes on like these animal things like these dogs with the big ears. And you walking in these you know southern schools and these people looking at you. And some of them got on pajamas because we don't supposed to be wearing this as we picking up kids. And they are walking there in front of the, and picking up the kids and everybody looking at them and they signing the kids out of the school. And we were getting a lot of complaints. I mean, they were wearing what they wanted to wear to pick up these kids instead of dressing a certain way when you present yourself with the company as well as going to pick up kids. And you got to realize that that's a reflection on the company. And the boss was like, you can't wear this, you can't wear that. And we would get papers or memos or certain stuff uh, not to wear. And some of them would still just go there and wear these type things. And it usually it looked crazy to me because I'm going in there and I see them getting it all the same tight, you know, with the logo on the car. And I'm like, wow, you know, because I, I trip off people going to the store anyway with pajamas. God feel like you can't find nothing better on than to put on pajamas just to buy some fruit. I mean, I I grew up in an age that we didn't wear our sleeping clothes in the stores. We put on a, a tie, some sweatpants, or whatever to go. I'm not going to go in there with some bedroom shoes on with my pajamas on. It just look, I don't know. This is a new age. So I'm, I'm trying to adapt with the new age, but I'm still in an old age of me. So <laughs> I, I it just, you know, it's just some things don't look normal to me, but, you know, that's, but that's how... I understand when we talk about dress a cat tie. I can only imagine listening to Sean and Dirt that somebody coming here with some big animal bedroom shoes on and some pajamas to an interview. I know yeah. they. I know it's like yeah. y'all gonna look at them like you on you on medication or. <laughs> yeah. hey, but Chris, look, Chris. So you said something about you're trying to adapt. It's certain things that that we don't need to. Adapt go. to and how you leave the house and how you present yourself. It doesn't even matter if you're going on a job interview. We were taught that when you leave your house, you present yourself in a certain way just to function through life. And that's a whole nother subject. But we're not adapting, period. There's certain things like, you know, well, when I was a deputy, um, white tees were 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 cool i guess so but by being a deputy in norfolk to certain people i knew what white tees represented right my son was not allowed to wear a white tee period point blank he was not 
we worked too hard for him to have a nice selection of clothes not to ever leave a house in a white tee. So it's certain things that we're just not going to conform to. We're going to keep it like it should be. And I want to build on that uh, for, for our young men. I know I was just talking to the wife just yesterday about this. Uh, some time ago, I, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, it became cool to wear slides with socks everywhere. And I, I just want to say this. If you start making a habit of dressing like that, then you'll find yourself dressing like that at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, my son, went, my oldest son went through a period where he was going to school with slides and socks. And I would often say to him, man, what if a fire broke out and you had to run? What if something took mm -hmm. place? And, and school is to prepare you for the rest of your life. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you should wear a suit to class, but I don't feel like slides and socks are acceptable for a school setting. That's just my personal opinion. And as, right. especially in our community, I think we have become too lax with our clothing when we're stepping out of the house. You could never catch me in a pair of slides going to school back in the 80s and 90s. It just wasn't happening. And call right. me old fashioned, but uh, one of the models of this show is if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And, and, and that's my whole premise. I didn't just start that because of this show. That was my motto all the time. So I, I just right. want to put that out there. Like, Pay attention and how you dress because you never know who's looking at you. You could be out here Absolutely. and you could be moving forward in a certain area or a certain career. And you might come across somebody when you're out at the grocery store, when you're out at the mall, when you're out at the movies. And don't think that they're not paying attention to how you look in that moment. So you right. want to be very selective of how you look when you step out. I wanted to... Um you know, get in about that, uh, that adding your little style or whatever to it. Um, I know y'all uh, know that, um, I went, I mean, you know, not so much indoors, but just outdoors. I like to wear hats, you know, because you know, that, that also adds a bit of, um, pizzazz because then, you know, however you, um, you, uh, you know, how you you um decorate it or how you have it on your head it's just it's just another um accessory to um to your attire to you know bring that extra bit of uh you know attention to you you know and i mean you know because most of the time i like to wear it you know enough to wear you know the brim is the brim is you know low enough to where it just cuts to my eyes but that's just my little style to it but go ahead all right go ahead um chris no, I was just saying, uh, it was a bit, it still is. I just, I just, I still buzz off. Of, I know we're talking about dressing, but I'm just saying, a lot of people have this nerve to, to wear pajamas. And I'm like, it's, it seems like you see one monkey do it, then all monkeys do it. And it's like, Chris, I, I feel you, bro. I buzz, you don't realize how I feel like, you, though, bro. I feel like I'm an alien. And another, it's like you ever seen like somebody landed on the wrong planet, like boom, and dang, you know, everybody wearing pajamas. It, it bugs me out because I'm like, God dang, man. I you just know what's worse my than grandma, that, I could only imagine me walking, going to church in pajamas. I can only imagine myself going to an interview in pajamas. I can only imagine myself going to my doctor appointment in the pajamas. I can only imagine myself in a nice restaurant with some slippers on, being down in the pajamas, because they're gonna be like, everybody gonna turn around and look at me. Is this dude retarded or something wrong with him? Why is he not dressed in this restaurant? Why do you wear pajamas to a grocery store and you think it's cool? I mean, maybe it's just me. No, it ain't but just I got an issue with that. It's not. I got a real big issue. Well, you know, <laughs> see, that that basically that basically <laughs> is just people who, you know, don't have anything else to do. They don't have anything Maybe, else to do. Maybe if you need on. clothes, <laughs> reach. Care. Look, get a, a fund me too, page but. if you lack money to buy clothes because that's what i look at they don't have no clothes or oh, the house just burned down good god so go to a church go to the drip store beg somebody for some clothes if you no. ain't got nothing if, but a job no hold on hold on please, please if we, if put we, some talk, about, if we talk about black I mean. folks no nah, no nah, i ain't gonna say they don't got no clothes because <laughs> they, 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 they got they got that's, clothes that's to go to the club thinking, that's they got mind. clothes to go I to the like club you don't but have no clothes you are i mean something's bad i mean homeless people got clothes 
clothes. They don't walk around in pajamas. So, they don't so, walk around in pajamas, bruh, man. Bruh, they got, they got some notion to bruh, know to put bruh. some clothes on, man. They got clothes. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about where this kind of pajama thing started. Uh, Victoria's Secret several years ago released this uh, clothing line called Pink. And, you know, it's made up of pajama and loungewear. So, you know, especially with women, they have taken it and just blown it out of proportion. Uh, they're wearing these pink pajama pants everywhere. They actually have these fuzzy shoes that are house shoes. Right. They actually wear out as regular shoes. And, you know, so they're taking this whole lounge slash pajama wear to another level. And they, and they call themselves making it acceptable to wear out and about. The kids are wearing it to school. Ladies are wearing it out in the mall, in the grocery store, like you said. Uh, they have these little fuzzy sliding shoes that they wear that uh, are house shoes. Uh, they, they're fuzzy, like an afro on them, walking around. Uh, no, nah, I'm serious. And they wear them out to restaurants to eat, to the grocery store, to the mall, to uh, go to the school to talk to the principal. Uh, when they're talking about their kids, it's it's crazy. Um, but once again, uh, we have to think about the things that we wear when we step out of this house because you right. never know, like I said earlier, who you are gonna run into. And I think we've developed this attitude where I don't care. They have to accept me for me. This is who I am. But no, they they don't have to. And they'll them. pass. They'll pass on you. Exactly. So there's no reason. It's not nothing so great about you if you're not putting the work into you. If you're just doing it, and and I'm I'm gonna be honest, wearing pajamas ain't even the minimum. That's below par when you're wearing pajamas out. It's unacceptable. We have become as a society, as a whole society, we have become too casual. Period. We have to, you know, we have to, we we have to establish standards. And people don't like it because in this world, in today's world, every, everything's about the individuality. Oh, I'm different. I'm a little snowflake. This is blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But you have to fit in somewhere. And either you're going to fit in with the, with, the, with the par and above or you're going to fit in with the below. And nobody wants to be at the bottom because it's a hell of a fight to get out of there. So, Sean, I think you had something to add, right? So, you know, Derek mentioned something about um, school and going like going to school. Um, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm assuming that, you know, most of your viewers are our age level or whatever. So these are things that that they're going to teach their kids, even right. if they don't possibly get it right. So, so let me give some advice to your viewers. In school around the ninth and 10th grade, make your child sign up as an elective marketing education, marketing. I'm a few years older than y'all, maybe one. The most valuable lesson I learned in school was marketing education. That was my favorite class. My marketing teacher was my favorite teacher, period. And it taught me all of this stuff that we're talking about right now. So 30 years later in the interview process, when I'm interviewing someone or either if I'm preparing or just how I go about certain things when it comes to job or work, I learned in the 10th grade, in the 11th grade, in the 12th grade, marketing education. It taught you how to dress. It taught you how to present yourself. It taught you um, what your employers are looking for. It gave you a base because to be quite honest with you, everybody's not getting that base at home. They might not know the base. Marketing education gave you a base. And man, that, that, that was probably the most influential thing in high school, man, that, that I've learned to prepare me for, for the real world. Marketing education. Mm. Make your kids sign up. Even if it takes one, one semester, if they don't like it. But it, it really gives you a great foundation of business and how to present yourself, how to talk, how to fill out the application properly. Now, you know, back then it was application. Now it, it's probably teaching you how to how to um, build a 
resume, like like all of those key things. Having that that resume type, and um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many examples of mm-hmm. what you're looking for that's out in the world. The internet. Look, right. we had to research back in the day. We either had to go to the library, or our parents had to invest in the most expensive books in the world, it's called encyclopedias. Right. And when they got delivered to you, they were already out of date. Okay, this generation, and we know our age group, like I said, is, is about our people. We want you to share this with your children and your grandchildren. And if some of these right. skills can help you, apply them because you may right. be at a point where you're wondering, I'm at this point in my career, and for some reason, I can't get to the next level. Sometimes it's these things that hold you back. Sometimes it's your attire that'll hold you back. Um, the one thing I can say about Raymond, Raymond added about hats. Like he'll add a hat to a wardrobe to kind of spice it up. But Raymond is what I would call, he, he's probably like a minimalist. I'm a minimalist when it comes to like jewelry. The most you'll get from me is a watch. Maybe a ring. That's about it. For some reason, when I look at, and this is like the branding of the car business, a guy like Sean. Sean, you got a bracelet on? Boom. I'm a, let me tell you this. It don't matter <laughs> where I go in the car business. Every finance manager that I have ever sat in front of has on a bracelet. I sw- I'm just saying. It's certain things that's protocol <laughs> that you may not be paying attention to in your, but I'm talking to the audience, Sean. In your particular <laughs> business, you may not be paying to some of this nuanced things that will put you in a different place. Something so small, so similar. Um, so, you know, so it's silent, but if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it and it could be something that could leave you stuck in a position where you want to go more. Hey, you know, can I add something? They, go ahead, Derek. Uh, yeah. I interviewed uh, for a position a couple of years ago and I never knew that these things were important, but after I got the job, I remember the hiring manager, she was a female, sat me down. She said, you know what impressed me the most about you? She said, your parents, but especially your nails were clean. Mm -hmm. I said, what? She said, you are well manicured. You you were well shaved. You had a nice haircut and your nails were clean. She said, you wouldn't believe how many people came in here and just were not well manicured in an interview. And I was blown away. She said, you had me by your posture and the fact that your nails were clean when you stepped in the room. And you smiled at her too. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Really, Sean? (laughs) I want to add something too, though, right? Right. I want to add something. Oftentimes, Oftentimes, and parents, what we have to teach our kids and grandkids, be as you said, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what position you're interviewing for. It doesn't mean that just because you're interviewing Big said to be a cook or Derek said, you know, in the medical field, um, it doesn't matter what position you're interviewing for to determine how you should present yourself. And I think that's a mistake. Mm-hmm. Right. That I see. Right. So in the car business, sometimes we might interview for a lot attendant and that person may come in in a T-shirt or may come in in a collared shirt, but just not a regular dress shirt and a tie. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to put on a jacket, just a shirt and a tie. It doesn't matter what position, what level you're interviewing for, because remember, your goal is not to keep that position. That's right. So. We've taken people that started out washing cars that that had a desire to sell cars. And I mean, it's a whole lot of stories, man, where where owners of dealerships start out washing cars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you you don't you have to always present yourself in a professional way, no matter what the position is that you're interviewing for. So I just wanted that was that was just kind of, you know, like on my mind, don't go into an interview thinking, well, I'm only applying for a cashier or a receptionist. So I'm going to put on this outfit here and not 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 impress them with the professional um, 
presentation. Right. And that's one yeah. thing that goes back to, like I said, the casualness of America, because right. we don't take a lot of things serious nowadays. When you go for a job interview, it's serious because this mm -hmm. business is deciding whether they're going to pay you from their budget to come do work for them. That's a serious investment. So you have to stretch their budget. budget. Right. Yeah. Or stretch their budget. That's right. Because they, and that's another thing, especially in sales. And I've, I have a background in sales as well. When you come in, they might stretch their budget because they say this person can add value. We're going to have to right. take a, a, a financial, maybe we may have to take a financial hit up front, but in the long run, this person's going to make us more money because of how, what they can do and how they can add and how they can prove themselves to us. So right. it's something to 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 think about um, when when presenting yourself, and it's just a matter. We just have to become more serious. We have to be the standout. I know people want to blend in a lot of times. No, you when you're going out into this workplace, if you're going to be working for somebody, and even if you're going to be um, working for yourself, you know, I'm I'm a solopreneur, self-employed. But what I do, one thing I do, and I like this. I got a, a a bunch of the same um, outfits. My dry cleaner, when I go to the dry cleaner, I'm dropping off uh, the same color plants and the same color shirts. And I wear like a uniform every day. Sean, no, Sean to see me. But it makes it simple. It keeps it consistent. And what I like, and this is, this is I'm going to give y'all some real talk here. Because I am a large black man, I'm 6'4 on a good day. And I'm about 300 pounds, around 300 pounds. <laughs> I'm a big black guy. And I don't care what nobody say. It makes a difference on how you present yourself. I can Absolutely. either come in and scare everybody in the damn room, or I can come in and put everybody in a room at ease. And the latter is typically what I choose to do. And what happens is when I'm in places, people immediately know when I show up, who I am, what I'm there to do because they get used to seeing me in what I call my uniform, you know? Right. So you have to, you want to be able to present yourself in a place where you're, you're non-threatening and, uh, and enjoyable. How about just being enjoyable? It's such a, a thing today to, 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 to be so cold and, 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 and just not inviting. How about just try to be enjoyable? Make, a, make the experience memorable that someone shared with you. Make it memorable. And and that's a, that's a good point, Big. I, and I <clears throat> talked about this on a previous show. It's just mm -hmm. all in how you greet people, because once again, you never know what how you're going to run across that person again in life. It could be a job that you're applying for, and they'd be like, "Hey, I know this person," but it's all in how you greet people. I don't care who it is. Uh, when I come across somebody, I want to find something positive to say about that person. They could be, in your eyes, the ugliest person in the world. They could be the nastiest as far as personality. I do not care. I'm going to find something positive to say about that person because I always want that person to feel like that they had a good interaction with me. Because I don't know, later on in life, that may be somebody that decides whether I get the job or not. And I always think about that. And another thing is to... um. If you want this want respect, you have to give respect, you know, because that's the one thing that's going to set you apart as well. Because if you you're respectful to that potential employer or, you know, the people around you, people are going to understand and that that you're that type of person that they just want to be around that. And you just carry that that, um you know, that 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 persona of 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 uh you know respect a respectable person because you you exhibit that and you give it chris you got something i was just listening to y'all soaking this okay in, man. <laughs> okay i got you now we're gonna be uh wrapping up in just a little bit but i wanted to leave on this note so critical we gotta let me hit the table mm. gotta oh, talk wow. about this one casual Friday. Now, let me just start here. Casual Friday. And let me tell you what it don't mean. Chris, tell them what it don't mean. What's that you hate? 
pajamas. Pajamas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so casual Friday does not mean for you to come to work in your pajamas or your peak attire that Derek, uh, Derek was just talking about. No pajamas. No lookalike pajamas. No could be pajamas. No might be pajamas. None of that. I, I, I know basically casual Fridays is a polo shirt, khaki pants. You know, just something that's kind of minimalist. That's if you're in the type of environment that, you know, that allows that type of. Well, if you know what, go ahead, Derek. In my field, casual Fridays means that you can wear jeans. And and that's kind of where I was talking about the form fitting versus the tight. Um, especially when you're, you're dealing in the health industry and you have patients and you have, it's a woman driven field. That's just what it is. Um, there's more women in the health industry than men. So, you know, when you talk about wearing jeans and women come to work with the holy jeans on or the, the jeans that's so tight, they look like they painted on, you have to understand, you got to go out here and deal with patients. <laughs> and, so, and a lot of your patients are male patients. So imagine you know, the interaction that's going to take place. And then as soon as somebody says something out of line, you have an attitude. But you got to think about these things. You know, we're men. Y'all are women. Um, we're visual. That's just what it is. Yeah. So when you wear clo certain clothing, we're going to respond, whether it's something we say, the way we look, the way we act. Th that's just what it is. So think about these things prior to making a decision of what you're going to wear in a professional setting. I would even go as far as if you want to interact, certain interaction with men, ladies, think about these things, period, before you step out of the house. Yes, you should be able to wear what you want to wear. I get it. It is your body. But don't be mad when you have a certain interaction with certain gentlemen because of what you have on, because you got to think about it. You created that situation. You might not know it, but you did because of what you have on, because I guarantee if you wear something loose fitting or form fitting versus tight, or you will not have the same interaction. Now, a guy might be like, you know what? That's she. She's a beautiful woman, but if you got something that's tight on, that's form, that's tight, showing all your curves, you're gonna get that. Damn girl, or <laughs> it's gonna be a totally different reaction. I'm just telling you. So man, you got you got to think about that before you step out of the house. But you know what? I, I trip off what you're saying there because I think they know that, but they want that attention. Because if you look at it, imagine those same women come out there with $5,000 just throwing it all around them. You think ain't nobody going to grab it? Or I come up to you and want to get some of it? I mean, or want to grab it? Hey, let me get some, let me get some, let me get some, let me get some. So when you come out there with your tail sticking out and tight, and then you get mad, but you wanted this attention. Because what? You wanted his attention. You come out here looking like something off a cartoon character, tail hanging way out here, breast hanging out, almost popping out, nipple almost popping out. Then this man looking at you perverted and you get offended because he said something. But look, I would be offended you came around me like that. The person who should be past, uh, complaining is the person. And when you said something, was you coming around? I, I, I'm the victim, not you, because you came around me like that. <laughs> If you have, uh, you know, um, pants or some type of, uh, you know, you know, um, jersey pants or whatever that has uh, letters printed on the back of it that says something, you know, people are going to that's going to be the first thing they need notice. So, you know, be, be mindful of that, because if somebody say, uh, you know, if it says it says I got ass, I mean, you know, hey, somebody can say, yeah, you got ass or something like that. You know what I mean? Because you got it printed on your ass. And, and, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. Like a lot of men will be like, hey, Pink, hey, Pink, yep. and yep. you'll be like, that's not my name, but you, that's what you have on you, on and your they, ass. And they don't know your name, and they're trying to get your attention. So of course they're gonna say, hey, Pink because they're trying to get your attention. So, and you have to think about these things. I'm not saying that a man is correct for addressing you like that. But like Chris, sometimes we are the victims. We're the victims right. of circumstance. The That's things right. that you have on, and, and, and men, this is how we look at things. We look at the way a woman, oh, sorry. A woman dresses. <laughs> 
And we think about the type of woman that we want to be with or the type of woman that we want to play with. Mm -hmm. And you might be putting yourself in that, that play category. So you want to, if you want a serious relationship and you want a man to take you seriously, then you have to think about what happens with that first interaction, because that says everything. Talk that talk, D. Jones. Preach. Talk that talk. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Sean, what you got? Hey, guys. Um, first of all, man, thank you for having me on the show, man. This has been fun. I ride with, with y'all brothers. I love the, the platform. Um, we got, I think we, we kind of went left. So I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you were adding to what we were. It, it, it always <laughs> go like that, Paul. It's all, it always go like that. We ain't going go left because this dress of tie. This is going to Herb. This was dress of tie. Never stay focused. <laughs> oh, no, never. Never. <laughs> I went like around the corner, you and I'm like, so I didn't know. Exactly. And, then, and look, Darren followed him. Darren exactly. Followed him. That, that, uh, they knew it all so, the time. And you so like, I don't know if y'all want me to say something about dress attire or back hey, off the run. Just go for, go for what you know, dog. Just go for what just you know. Just bro. I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got nothing. <laughs> so, guys, thank you, man. Thank you. Yep. Uh, All right. So, look. This is what I want to start rounding in up. We uh, we started out with casual Fridays. Let's have a, 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 That's a I about, <laughs> about business casual and what it means. Raymond hit on it. One of the acceptable attire pieces for business casual is khakis and a polo okay so that's one acceptable piece for business business casual business casual is also a button down and khakis if your job says you can wear jeans i would say this you have to remember you're always at work so if you can wear jeans that's fine wear jeans but for the shirt or your top I would go follow the business casual guidelines, which is going to be a polo or a button down and women can wear those two. And then there's, they can wear a blouse um, if they want. Um, also the shoes in business casual, no sneakers. There are, um, I can't even think of shoes. You can wear moccasins. You can wear like deck shoes. You can wear um, pretty much anything. That's not Crocs. Not Crocs. <laughs> not, thank you, Raymond. Crocs is not, not is not a part of no no back or open toed. Well, women. No, we're going to scratch that. No, no back, no open back or open toed shoes for business casual. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Sean, you got anything else on the business casual? Um. So with the business casual, that's going to be so for me personally, there again, it, it all depends on how you want to present yourself, right? Well, um, there's guidelines there. There's there's guidelines, but go ahead. Right. So for me, a business casual might just be no tie, um, no neckwear that that's casual, um, d depending in your setting, whether or not it's work. Some people go to seminars and, and, and it's business casual or or work conferences and it's business casual. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a dress shirt, no tie, no jacket. So that's that's how I would probably present myself in a business casual manner. It'll be some slacks or like a pants, um, you know, to a suit, a dress shirt and no neckwear. And one thing to always take note of, you can always go up, but there's a minimal standard for business right. casual. Right. And if, like I said, if, if your company says, you know, you can wear jeans on Friday, you can wear the jeans, but try to tie in the business casual pieces to the other side, just so you, because you're still at work right. and you always want to remember that you're always at work. You have your presentation has to be a certain way and you want it to be a certain way because people view you by, by your attire. It's just the way we are, you know, it's just the way we are. But uh, in rounding up, um, I want to give Sean a little bit of time. Sean is, uh, you know, like I said, he is a, at a, a finance manager at a dealership. 
but he's also a photographer and one of our YouTube brothers. Sean also has a YouTube channel. So Sean, tell us about that before we wrap it all up, brother. So thanks, man. Um, so f- photography f- for me just started out as a hobby. Um, I've always had a pretty decent camera when it comes to just capturing life stuff with, with the kids and sports. Um, my wife and I, Crystal, we traveled to f- football games, man. And one day I just kind of took my cameraman and took some pictures. I had no idea about what I was doing. I had it in a sports mode and I was just taking pictures and came back home and blew them up and they looked good. And then it just started, you know, just kind of taking pictures of, of, of people. And then the next thing you know, man, a year later, um, you know, I was in business. So, yeah, man, it's going well. Um, so, yeah, it, it's Sean L. Porter for photography um, on the YouTube. You can just search that. Um, my website is Sean L. Porter photography dot com. Um, yeah, man, that's it. That's what's up, brother. We, we we definitely appreciate you being on with us today, looking sharp with the uh, with the with the bow tie. And then like we really can't the see that pocket square. We really can't see it. There it is. There we go. There it is. Just fancy, man. <laughs> Just a way to add that nice, nice finishing touch. So um, with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over back over to my brother D, D Jones. Oh, and you know how we do. I want to thank Sean Porter for uh joining the show. It was a pleasure having you on, sir. Um, <laughs> with that being said. I'm going to drop this on you. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Get established. This has been another episode of the Get Established Show. Today, we talked about interviewing skills and workplace attire, how to work it out, some things that can help you benefit in your career and just moving forward in life. We hope you took heed. We hope you enjoyed. We want to thank again Sean Porter for stopping through and giving us some skills. We appreciate you, brother. Appreciate Please don't it, forget brother. to like Thank this channel, me. subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you'll know when we drop a video. We typically drop one every Sunday. So we appreciate you guys. We appreciate the community. We hope that the things we're doing here are helping. And we want, a guy, we want you guys to take this information and help somebody else. So with that being said, it's again your favorite internet uncle signing out. Till next time, have a great week. This has been another episode. What I need to do? Oh man, my fault. I stole yeah, your yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, see, see. That's why you edit, bro. That's why you edit. No, tighten up, tighten up. So cut, 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 cut. <laughs>